and the take. The problems are at least one for Ola, the cab-hailing company turned electric vehicle maker, started with a fork. Not the kind you eat your food with, but the piece of metal that joins the handlebar of a two-wheeler to the front wheel. Now, that oversimplification is mine. Ola's scooter and technology was acquired from a Dutch e-scooter company, Itergo, and the same technology and components were rolled out in the Indian market in August 2021. A major exception seemed to be the battery pack, which was now fixed as opposed to the removable in the original. Automotive reviewers call the Ola S1 Pro a better scooter than the original and India's best performing, fastest and even best looking scooter. Till the fork started to collapse soon after and complaints gathered steam in January last year. Users sharing pictures and even starting a change.org petition against the company. Some users pointed out and automotive enthusiasts and journalists I spoke to concurred that it was quite obvious that this design was never meant for Indian roads and Ola should have done a proper recall and fixed those forks. Instead, in March, it offered an optional upgrade to strengthen the fork further, even while insisting the concerns were unfounded and its components were engineered under extreme conditions and built for greater loads. Now, if those concerns were unfounded, then why change? Anyway, maybe I only read some of the posts, but they appeared largely of the kind who were seeking the company's help and assistance rather than anything else. Nevertheless, Ola's response was denial, obfuscation and attack, as is quite evident from the March note as well. A trait that continues to the present day as a social media battle surfaced over the weekend between the founder of the company and a stand-up comedian who posted pictures of scooters awaiting repair. Now, there are of course several lessons in this. First, there is a reason why products that are inherently capable of causing harm to its users, like two or four wheelers, have to go through severe testing. One of the criticisms Tata Indica faced in its early years, as the Tata Nano later, was that these products were not sufficiently tested. Now, the satisfaction that Tata Indica was India's first homegrown Swadeshi car would not really help if the car broke down in the middle of nowhere with no easy mechanical fix. Nor did it help that the Tata Nano was the cheapest car designed and made for India when it experienced multiple problems, including catching fire. And all of this happened in 2010. But in both these cases, Ratan Tata did not launch a personal attack and blame competitors and social media trolls for his misery. Thankfully, there was no social media or trolls then. Now, the problem may be with a fork or a battery, but it gets compounded when clearly there are not enough repair staff to attend to the problem or service center capacity. Now, that reflects inexperience and arrogance or the assumption that a two-wheeler is like a mobile phone, use and throw rather than expect a service center to respond and repair. Traditional automotive makers understand that cycle better. That setting up a dealership network which sells the vehicles should go along with servicing capability as new vehicles are launched into the market. Ola instead went for a direct-to-consumer approach, which has evidently backfired because it now says rather two weeks ago that it's going into a multi-brand retail showroom model. Now, there are other problems there, which I shall pick up at a later date. But the bottom line is that the automotive industry is a tough one for serious players and even the best make mistakes. There is a shortage of electric vehicle technicians today for all classes of EV vehicles, in which case you should not be dumping product in the market without having proportionate and trained service staff to respond when things go wrong, unless you didn't really budget for it in the first place. And then there is price. Ola is now selling its S1 scooter starting at 49,000 rupees, seems fine, except that this was earlier advertised as starting at 80,000 rupees. The prices are still showing on several auto websites, by the way. Now, this is irrational and detrimental to the company and the industry because low prices means compromises along the way, including the cost of setting up a spares and service network. The company could, of course, argue that investors are paying for these market entry or penetration strategies and discounting is a cost that they can bear. Now, that is technically correct, but practically improbable as eventually the mistakes of the past will catch up with you. Because unlike in other digital industries, your job does not end with customer acquisition. It begins there.